Hey everybody! So, uh, the season is quickly approaching, and it's uh, time to do the official Sea Dog uh, Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket schedule prediction. And there's a couple videos I do every off season, and uh, this is one of them. I always predict game by game uh, what I think our record is going to be. And we have a tough schedule, uh, you know, coming up this year, and uh, I, I think we should take a look at it. So. Uh, I think we're probably going to be pretty good. Obviously, year two, uh, full year two under Brent Key. He, of course, had the interim season. And I uh, thought, you know, he's done a great job so far. And he's, you know, got us to a bowl last year. I would hope that that's the standard now is, is a bowl game. Um, of course, we did, you know, have to scrape and scrounge our way to a bowl game last year. And <coughs> this year's schedule is no cakewalk. So let's see if we can freaking get to a bowl game and perhaps even beyond uh, by taking a look at this schedule. All right. So <coughs> first things first, Florida State in Ireland, neutral site, freaking on the other side of the pond there in week zero. So one interesting thing about Georgia Tech this year is, well, for all of college football, the schedule is such that everybody gets two bye weeks. Well, since we play in week zero, we get three of them, which is kind of ridiculous. Uh, but we'll get into that. So first up is Florida State. Obviously, they are a super tough team from last year. Got snubbed from the playoffs, in my opinion. Uh, whatever you say about them, they were a really good team. Not the greatest in their bowl game, of course. And that's kind of what I'm looking at here is that they had a great team last year, but they had a ton of transfers out. Now, they did have a ton of transfers in, and I'm not saying they're going to be bad. Um, I just happen to think Florida State is probably going to be a little bit worse than last year at least. And um, it kind of starts with uh, their quarterback, DJ Uli Angale. He's not a very good quarterback in my opinion. He's, you know, bounced around from Clemson to Oregon State and out of Florida State. This screams – them bringing in Uli Angale screams bridge quarterback to me. Uh, kind of like, you know, when a team is trying to – they don't really have, you know, a set kind of quarterback this year. They've got this hot shot five-star quarterback coming in, and they just need a bridge this year. Kind of like Tennessee did, for example, last year. Uh, you know, they're bridging to Nico Amaliava. Uh, so they had, you know, they're bridging between Hendon Hooker and Joe Milton. Obviously, Joe Milton's not the best, not the, you know, not your number one pick, not the freaking all-world guy. He's just getting you to next year, and he's probably pretty serviceable. So that's kind of what this DJ Uyagole looks like to me. Um, he hasn't been doing the best in camp, I've heard. And he's just not lived up to his billing. He was a five-star recruit. He's far from that. He's far from that. So, you know, he's, you know, he's got issues aiming. He's slow. He's just not the best. Um, of course, he's going to be surrounded by a ton of talent at Florida State. So, you know, obviously I'm not expecting to come up in here and whoop up on him. I will say I think Florida State's going to be worse. I think we're going to be better. That is a recipe for an upset. So, you know, it, it, am I going to pick the upset here? No. I think Florida State, I'd probably give it to them. I'd probably give them the win. Um, I think we can win. I think that, you know, it's very possible. Um, but, you know, just the talent differentials a lot and and <laughs> – I mean, we faced DJ Oyangale before, and no, while he's not a great quarterback, uh, being surrounded by talent like it was at Clemson, we've seen how that turned out. Um, I do think this will be a competitive game with the Jackets having a, a big-time chance to pull it off. Um, I'll go ahead and pick Florida State to win um, by a slim margin. Whatever the line is, I think it's like Georgia Tech uh, plus 12 is the line. Yeah, uh, give me Georgia Tech and the points. Um but I, I, I'll just roll with Florida State on this one just to be sure. I still have reservations about the Yellow Jackets. 
Obviously, our defense was horrible last year. You know, I've heard great things about our defense, and I've heard that, you know, I've heard great things coming out of practice, but I heard it last year too. I'm going to have to see it to believe it kind of because our defense was one of the worst in the country. We were like the second worst in the Power Five or something like that. It was bad. It's going to take a miracle, an act of God, to freaking get us out of that, okay? Um, and, and, and the turnover issue with Haynes King – uh, is scary too. Haynes King needs to fix the turnover issue. If we have a decent defense and Haynes King turns the ball over half the time that he did last year, we'll we'll freaking win eight games. Okay, uh, we'll win seven eight games if those are the you know if those are the terms. Otherwise, I'm not quite sure where will I land. Probably somewhere in the middle. Uh, we come back home the next week for Georgia State. No circumstance I'm gonna freak us freaking pick us to lose to a group of five team could it happen yes it freaking happened last year with bowling green i freaking predicted us i didn't even bother previewing the game that week because you know i i thought well there's no way we freaking lose the bowling green right yeah we made a habit of embarrassing ourselves in these type of situations um i really hope that we're done with that i hope that the team is you know traumatized and scarred for life from that experience last year because I know I am and I don't freaking want to see us lose to any more group of five teams it's so humiliating okay especially Georgia State uh this is an actually a very special case for me um and the fact that Georgia State is in Atlanta they're like a brand new football team we cannot afford to lose this game do you know how embarrassing and humiliating that would be if we actually lost to Georgia State uh, it cannot happen. It doesn't need to happen under any circumstances. We need to absolutely destroy them and definitively say, this is who is the team in Atlanta. And I think we will, okay? Not to mention they have Zach freaking Gibson at quarterback. If we have any type of pass rush, okay, any type of pass rush, we will we'll, we'll destroy them. They won't be able to do anything. For those of you that don't know, Zach Gibson, the quarterback of Georgia State, has just transferred there from Georgia Tech. He was our quarterback for a couple games in the uh, in the interim year when Brent Key took over. And, of course, uh, he was a backup quarterback last year. He didn't see the field, so he transfers to Georgia State. And uh, he actually helped us beat North Carolina, uh, which is crazy. But um, we're not terrible and trash like North Carolina, so we're not going to lose, okay, to Zach Gibson. He literally has no mobility whatsoever. Um, and uh, if we have any sort of pass rush, we'll be able to eat him alive. Hopefully our pass rush has improved. I've heard good things about it in practice. And, uh, you know, that's so that's something that I'm hoping maybe we have at least enough to freaking get to the quarterback of Georgia State. I hope, right? Maybe. We'll see. I'm predicting the win. Uh, we ought to be able to beat Georgia State convincingly, please, for the love of God. If we lose this game, there's no telling what I might do. Uh, I don't even want to go there. That's a dark, dark place. I've been punished enough, okay? I've been punished enough the past four years. I don't need any more punishment, please. Please, my Yellow Jackets, if you do anything else, just please beat Georgia State, please. Moving on. Syracuse at home. No, we have to go to the freaking to New York to their freaking indoor stadium, their the dome, the fart box as I like to call it. And uh, we got to play Syracuse Orange. So obviously our last meeting we beat them to clinch a bowl berth, which was pretty cool. And now we get to go to their uh, stadium, if you want to call it that, their dome. And play them. Now, they have a brand-new head coach. Of course, he was <laughs> uh, fired after uh, – Dino Babers was fired after his uh, crushing defeat against my Yellow Jackets last year. And and so that was great. So they brought in this freaking uh, position coach from Georgia. So everybody's high on them. They have a top 25 transfer portal class. That's all great. I think they're going to be probably pretty solid. They'll probably be five or six win team. We should be able to get this one. I'm predicting us to beat Syracuse. I think that we can beat them. Uh, it would be bad if we lost to a first-year head coach, okay, who just got the freaking job, right? We don't need to be – we don't have any business losing to Syracuse this year. 
Uh, they might turn out to be a pretty good team under under this new coach. But, you know, in my opinion, uh, you know, week three, he's going to be brand new, and he's not going to play in week zero. So this will be his second game. It will be against us. And, and we just shouldn't be losing under those circumstances, in my opinion, even if it is on the road. They don't have any tie enough freaking home field advantage either, okay? So we should be able to handle the Syracuse, right? Then we come back, get VMI at home, FCS team. We're not losing to them. Even if we're bad, we're not going to lose to them. We didn't lose to freaking what? We were bad last year. Didn't lose. We blew out South Carolina State or whatever it is we played last year. We'll beat VMI 100 to nothing. Or probably 100 to freaking 99 if we give up all these points like we did last year on our defense. But anyway, uh, we'll, I'm not worried about that game. We'll beat them. If we're losing to VMI, we got freaking big trouble. You can throw all my predictions out the window. Tough game up next against Louisville. Uh, Louisville is kind of in the same boat as Florida State. They were great last year, made it to the ACC championship. They were a great team. We freaking had them, dude. We freaking had them, man, in that first game in the season. <laughs> that was a real heartbreaker uh, against that uh, that Louisville game, man. That was, that was rough. So uh, can we beat Louisville this year at Louisville? I don't know, man. Jeff Brom is a hell of a coach. It's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough uh, to freaking beat them. They, they've got, you know, I, I, I disrespected them all last year. Everybody was saying, oh, Louisville, they're going to be so freaking good. I didn't get it. I didn't understand. Why the hell would everybody think that Louisville is going to be so freaking good? Like, it didn't make any sense to me. Of course, they brought in this transfer class, and they had a really good year. I was wrong about them last year. This year, people have calmed down on them. They'll probably take a step back. That was, you know, you can't just do that every year. Um, I know they brought in another good transfer class, uh, but they had a bunch of leaf too. So it's kind of like those kind of teams are like wild cards. They could suck. They could be really good, you know, somewhere in the middle. I don't know. This is a really hard game for me to pick. <sighs> I have to give probably the edge to Louisville uh, at home. I'd probably give it to them. I hate to do it. I really do, but they're a solid freaking team, man. Jeff Brown's a hell of a coach. Um, they earned my respect last year. I dissed them, and uh, I think this will be a really close game again. Maybe we pull it out. Honestly, to me right now, this is a 50-50 game. I hope that they earn some respect, from, or we earn some respect from them too because a lot of Louisville fans were overlooking us, saying it would be easy out, whatever, whatever. Well, we gave them more hell than pretty much anybody else in the ACC. So, hopefully we gain some respect from them, but I don't know if freaking taking, uh, taking it to them on the road there. Now, of course, the Yellow Jackets do play really good on the road, so who knows, especially against ranked opponents. So, this is probably the least confident I'll be in a pick this year. Uh, then we get a bye week and get uh, Duke at home. Now, look, I think we're going to beat Duke. I probably think they'll be pretty bad this year. They lose Mike Elko. They, you know, bring in Manny Diaz, which I think could work out for them. Um, but they lost a lot, man. They lost their staff. We got their defensive coordinator. And uh, I think it's going to be a little bit before Handy Manny is freaking able to turn that thing around there. Duke is not an easy job to, uh, you know, be successful at. So I think that we're going to be able to take on Duke um, at home there. So <clears throat> that'll be a win for the Yellow Jackets. Moving on to North Carolina, uh, that is also a win. We own them. We own their mind, body, and soul. There's absolutely no way we're freaking losing to North Carolina. They bring in Jeff Collins as defensive coordinator. <laughs> if you somehow don't know, he's the freaking ex-coach of Georgia Tech. We just fired him. He's freaking terrible. He did not learn a single thing, okay, from his time at Georgia Tech. And... He is not going – this is such a desperate move to me. This is such a – this is this is on the level of – remember last year when Jimbo Fisher was, like, on his last leg at Texas A&M and desperately hired freaking Bobby Petrino to try to fix the offense at the last second? That's what this screams to me. Everybody th knows Mac Brown is too freaking old to be coaching right now. And he is, you know, he's past his prime. And it's, you know, he's on his last legs, Okay. And I think that 
he's probably, you know, they're going to be pretty bad. Last year, okay, without Drake May, they're 6 and 16. I I am <laughs> I I honestly think they might miss a bowl this year. That's how bad I think it's going to be. Jeff Collins has doubled down on his stance. It's COVID's fault. It's not his fault that things were bad at Georgia Tech. And he's going to keep doing the same stupid crap that he did at Georgia Tech that made us suck. He's going to do it in Chapel Hill now. I am so thankful for that. If we lose to this game, there's no telling what I might do. Because uh, because sticking it to Jeff Collins is one of the – is one of the <laughs> – Things I want to do the most. I, I want it more than I want to breathe, okay? I, I really, really want to beat down Jeff Collins um, and, and just crush him. I want to just crush him. And North Carolina. I hate them. I hate them. And we absolutely own them. We kick their ass every year. And this is our last chance that we're going to get to play them because in the new ACC scheduling, whatever, we don't play them. Uh, we don't play them, but twice in the next seven years, and it's not for a few years that we're going to get to play them again. So yes, I want to take this opportunity and smash their souls into the dirt, like they deserve, like Jeff Collins deserves for freaking for freaking ruining our program. Okay, so that's how I freaking feel about North Carolina, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to walk right up in their building and kill them. That's what's going to happen. <sighs> okay. Then we come back home to the Benz at freaking Notre Dame. Look, I hate Notre Dame so much, dude, okay? I hate them so much. I hate these freaking guys. This, I hate them for a reason. If you look at the, if you look at the, like, overall series between Notre Dame and Georgia Tech, it's, like, hard to look at, dude. They, 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 they've got us, like, something like 36 to 6 wins all time. It's ridiculous. Uh, we can never beat them. They're probably going to be pretty good this year. I think we lose to them. Okay, it's it's it sucks, it's horrible. I want nothing more than a freaking beat them, but we're I mean it's going to be probably too tough. Okay, um, they're more talented and they're just they're just kind of a higher echelon right now than us, and I really hate it. Do we have I mean do we have a chance to beat them? Of course, we have a chance to beat every single team on the schedule. That's the thing, but we also have a chance to lose to them. Uh, do I think out of Notre Dame, Florida State, and Georgia are three biggest games that we'll get one of them? Yeah, I, I do. If I had to go through and say, like, we'll beat one of them, yeah, I think I think we will. I, do, I really do think we'll beat one of those teams. But here I go again, predicting us to lose to them. So I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see about the Georgia game when we get to it, right? <laughs> so... Um, so we're at five wins right now. Uh, next is Virginia Tech at Lane Stadium, dude. That's going to be a tough one, man. That's going to be a tough one. I really don't know, man. Another coin flip game. You look at you look at Louisville, games like this, Louisville, Virginia Tech, probably NC State. It's going to be tough to beat them, dude. It's going to be tough. So, geez, man. I think, you know what, Virginia Tech, they're the Louisville of this year. So they're getting all this love and freaking adoration from everybody in the freaking world right now, okay? Um, and, you know, everybody's talking about, oh, Virginia Tech, dark horse to make the playoffs, dark horse to make the ACC championship, you know, could win eight games, whatever it is. Well, okay, based on what? Well, look, let's see, let's see. They got a new coach, right? New and exciting, Brent Fry. He comes in last year, uh, wins six. He goes six and six. They were terrible before under Fuente, right? Uh, so he goes six and six. They have a promising looking offense, and um, you know they they had some hiccups, like lost to a group of five team in the year, whatever, whatever. Overcome the adversity, went six and six, and won their bowl game against a pretty decent uh, group of five opponent. Well. And so, you know, everybody's excited on them looking at them this year. Well, does that not sound freaking familiar? Okay. That I literally just described Georgia Tech, too. Okay. We did the same exact thing as them last year. Everybody is fondling the freaking balls of freaking Virginia Tech, and nobody gives a crap about Georgia Tech. We're the exact same team, dude. You know what? We're coming up in here. We're beating Virginia Tech. Okay. 
We're beating them. They're freaking overrated. They're going to find out who the real darlings of the freaking offseason should have been. It's the Yellow Jackets. We're, we're, Brent Key is a better coach than Brent Pry. We have a better team. We're going to go up in there. I don't care about Lane Stadium, whatever. We beat them last time we went, okay? Their home advantage is not that freaking great. And we play like we play like beasts on the road, dude. I don't care if they're ranked, whatever, at the time, you know? They probably won't even be as good as everybody thinks, right? They just have an easy schedule. Meanwhile, we're going through the freaking ringer here. We're going through this freaking murderer's row. We're going to come out of this like hardened battle veterans, okay? And we're going to put the hurt on Virginia Tech. And with that, we're at what? One, two, three, four, five, six wins. We're ball eligible. Three weeks to go. Three playing weeks to go. Five weeks to go in the season because we have two freaking bye weeks coming up. So strange, right? Uh, after this is a bye week, right? Then we get Miami at home. <laughs> this is so weird. The Miami game is sandwiched between two bye weeks. I mean, if we're going to have three bye weeks, at least space them out some. This is like the strangest schedule. I haven't seen this before, so I don't know. A little weird, but, you know, late in the season, it is kind of nice to get a break. They say rest versus uh, rust. I think, in this case, late in the season, uh, rest is what you want, right? So this might be a good thing. We get Miami at home. Look, Miami and NC State, we're going to win one of these games, okay? Whether it's freaking – we get them both at home, whether it's freaking Miami or NC State, I don't know. I think – God, I hate to do this, man. I think Miami's probably going to be pretty good this year. And, of course, they're hurting from last year. They hate us. What We freaking humiliated them from last year. They're looking for revenge. They'll probably beat us as much as I hate freaking predicting them to beat us. Um, now that I predicted them to beat us, we'll probably, you know, probably win. But, yeah, dang it. Just, ah. Mario Crystal Ball is a good hire. It was, I mean, in my opinion, here's, here's my assessment on Miami, okay? Mario Crystal Ball had, you know, he had to get in there, change the culture, whatnot, put, get his guys in there, get his recruiting going, and get it together. So, obviously, Miami fans are just impatient. So, they make it seem like he's not a good coach, not a good hire. Of course, he makes dumb freaking decisions, right? Um, but, you know, it was a good hire. They're not going to fire him. They paid him too much. They, they can't fire him for until at least, like, five years, right? Um it, they, you know, they batted out of their freaking league with hiring him, and they're not going to fire him, and he's not a bad coach. And, yes, he had some funny moments and some funny losses here in the past couple of years. I think they're probably going to get back on their feet here soon and probably win eight or so games. Miami fans want them to win the world and win the Natty next year and go 100-0 and and freaking win the ACC and all that. I'm not going that far, okay? They'll take another step forward from last year. Um, they'll be pretty good. They won't be invincible, though, like the freaking Miami wants. It'll be slow progress, and eventually Mario will have them looking probably something like Oregon looked like when he was in the Pac-12, um, you know. But that's a good thing, okay? I mean, not a good thing in the sense that Mario won freaking conference championships and beat a bunch of teams and won a bunch of games. But for teams like Georgia Tech, you can outcoach Mario Cristobal. Obviously, he's a total freaking buffoon when it comes to um, game day coaching decisions, right? Clock management, all that. Um, not an X's and O's guy. He's a recruiter. That's good enough to win you a bunch of games. But if you have a coach who knows what he's doing and can strategize around that, um, you know, you can beat him. Look no further than Utah. When Mario Cristobal was at Oregon, look no further than Utah, okay? Um, Utah freaking had their number and beat them every time. Because why? Because they played tougher football and they were better coached. And that's why Utah had their number. And that's why, you ready for this? The games between Georgia Tech and Miami will always be close as long as Brent Key and Mario Cristobal are there. Dude, somebody's blowing me up. Damn, I'm filming a video. Okay, so I'll predict on a win for now, right? Get out of here. Just get out of here. Off Another freaking bye week, and we get NC State at home. I'm giving us a win here. NC State had a great year last year. They were a great team last year every single time. This is history, people. 
This is history. This is historical freaking back, facts backing this up. Dave Doran has been there for a long time and has proven time and time again, okay, that he is not able to uh, follow up a good year with another good year. Every time they either have every time they have a good year, they either are terrible the next year or just okay. Like they don't have two good years in a row. That's just the identity of NC State. They're a team that has to build up to good years. That's not necessarily a bad thing. That's you know, probably the best you're going to get at NC State. They, they were great last year, had a great year, um, but, you know, that's not going to be, uh, you know, that's probably going to be the case. It's not sustainable to have a really, really good team every year. I think we'll catch them at a good time this year. Late November, dude, at Bobby Dodd Stadium, this will, this will be a night game. Look, look at that, 730. Night game, dude, we're taking them down. I'm telling you, dude, we're taking them down, Okay. Uh, one of the two, Miami or NC State. All, honestly, all these games, these games are hard to pick, man. Georgia Tech's good, and it just depends, okay, on our defense and stuff like that. But man, I really do think, uh, I really do think we could have something special. Then we get the freaking easy mop up win at the end of the year, okay, against Georgia, right? Um, <laughs> bunch of freaking jokers. Uh, Got to go to overrated freaking Sanford Stadium. And whoop up on those posers, right? Um, listen, okay, my freaking prediction here still holds true. I said this last year. In the next three years, we will beat Georgia. It uh, didn't happen last year. It'll be either this year or next year. Uh, you can take that to the bank, okay? They're not freaking special. They're not freaking good anymore, right? They had their run of college football, okay, while all of the big boys were down in the sport. You had Clemson inexplicably fall off a cliff after the, you know, just Sean Watson and Trevor Lawrence years. Uh, Georgia gets them at the literally, you know, never plays them then, but freaking gets them when they have freaking Yui Angalale at quarterback. whoop de freaking do You beat the freaking terriblest terror team in the past 10 years. Great job. Okay? Then you have, then you, you know, Alabama. Nick Saban is like at the end of his career. And, you know, he and it takes two of their best players to get freaking <laughs> – to get the the natty win right it takes two of their best players going down uh, to get that and then he still beats you in his last year it's hilarious to me so georgia is a team that caught lightning in a freaking bottle while everybody else was down uh they happened to you know get recruiting and whatever 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 like kirby some kind of freaking genius x and o strategist whatever no he got lucky he got lucky he recruits really well i give him that and they freaking they 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 were recruiting really well at the right time, uh, while everybody else was down. Uh, okay, and that time's over. The dog days are over, and uh, Georgia doesn't have a freaking uh, Charmin soft easy baby freaking schedule cupcake schedule this year, right? They don't get to play uh, poopty poop state in week three and freaking Vanderbilt in week four, and South Carolina in week five anymore, right? They got to play freaking Texas, Ole Miss, Alabama. That's freaking – that's like three losses right there, dude, not to mention half their roster's getting arrested. What a bunch of freaking degenerate losers up there in Athens, okay? And the Yellow Jackets are taking you down this year, either this year or next year. Mark my words. And in the future, in the foreseeable freaking future, Okay. The Bulldogs freaking ran as ever. So that's what I got to say about that. You can run and tell that, homeboy. What do I got as that? Seven and five? Not a bad year for a tough freaking schedule. A lot of toss up games on this schedule. And um, I, you know, this is not an easy thing to pick, especially with the question marks we kind of have on defense. I'm, that's what I'm most concerned about. And then, you know, of course, our offense with the turnovers. Those are my two biggest concerns. Haynes King's turnovers and defense. Uh, if those two things are great, we'll win eight games. If those two things are terrible, I think the floor for us is five wins. Of course, we're going to be competitive, uh, c competitive in every game. Uh, I, I full-heartedly believe that, even if we have defensive issues, whatever. The team is still pretty well coached, um, fights hard doesn't give up stuff like that so um could we have another year like last year where we're like hot and cold and freaking bipolar perhaps perhaps uh, i'm hoping for something a little more you know stable this year 
and and despite the tough schedule, I got us winning seven games. Might be a little optimistic. Um, six and six, okay, this year, where where we win the games that we're supposed to, and and you know, win a couple toss up games and maybe get an upset. That's an improvement in my eyes over last year. If you look at last year, um, you know, six and six this year versus six and six last year, you know, like how I described. That's that's an improvement to me because last year, you know, this year the schedule's so freaking hard, and last year we were so crazy bipolar we barely made a bowl by the by the skin of our teeth, right? I mean, we had that crazy last second win over Miami and lost to Bowling Green and stuff like that. So a little more stable would be easier on my freaking mental health and my physical health even. Um, you know, I wouldn't. Last year took several years off my life, so like. I'm hoping for something a little more, something that makes sense, maybe a little more. You couldn't freaking figure out our team last year. Could be like that again this year. I, I mean, I guess I kind of just chalked that up last year to be in, like, Brent Key's first year. I'm hoping for just a little bit more stability this year, okay? So that's kind of my feel on the Yellow Jackets. Um, a lot up in the air. A lot, you know, that's kind of hard to figure out here to predict the schedule, but this is kind of where I land. Uh, seven wins, not freaking bad, right? And of course, we'll get to bowl game and kick whatever freaking team that sucks that gets matched up with us. We'll freaking we'll we'll put the hurt on them. So, well, that has been the official Sea Dog Georgia Tech 2024 schedule prediction. Y'all, let me know what you think in the comments. Give me your, give me your record predictions too. Um, do you think that I uh, underrated us, overrated us, just right? Whatever you what. Uh, you know, whatever you think, let me know, all right? Um, this is Sea Dog, and I, uh, I will say uh, go Jackets. I'll see you all next time.